Well, we're here today to show you a couple things to do in the car, as well as to take Parent Taught Driver's Ed and show you safety, responsibility, and how to be a safe and responsible driver. Parent Taught Driver's Ed, I decided to do Parent Taught Driver's Ed for one reason, because I thought that the, the driving schools, as well as Parent Taught programs out there, were not showing enough things to help you all do what you need to do to get from point A to point B. In my videos, what I try to do is I try to t show the parents how to teach the kids. I still own a driving school right now. And what I do is I have to take those, dr those driving instructors and teach them how to be better instructors to teach kids. So I decided since with Parent Taught Driver's Ed, I decided since I got to teach my instructors, I might as well just take the parents and teach them too so they can make better, safe drivers. So at Parent Taught Driver's Ed, I'm going to show you how to go through the DPS work as well as show you how to do techniques on the road. I'm going to show you things that the student may do wrong and how to fix those things that you do at Parent Taught Driver's Ed. At Parent Taught Driver's Ed, I hope that you take this video, use the material that I've given you, and that it will help you become better, safe, and responsible drivers. The first drill that we're going to actually do is we're going to line the car up and you can either use a pole in the parking lot or you can use a cone if you want to go get a cone. You can get some, some cones uh, at a dollar store for like, you know, two or three dollars, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put the car here, okay, assuming that this is your car. You're going to have an object that's on the ground, okay, and then you're going to have them pick an object way back here past this object and you're going to have them drive a straight line drill. Now the, you're going to drive straight to this object and stop. Two things that that does. The first thing it does, it helps you as the parent watch to see if they're going to weave the lane. Okay? We don't want to see them, we don't want to see them do this back and forth. Okay? We want to see them to go straight for that. The second thing it does, it helps them get used to the brakes. Okay? Some kids are not used to ABS brakes or different types of power brakes or so forth, okay? So that is the very first goal we're going to do when you get out of the parking lot, straight line drill. And I will show you this out when we go outside. Pick a line on the road. You're going to drive forward. As you drive forward, stop. Go forward again. Stop. And what that actually helps them do is get, and then they're going to back it up. Straight line drill. Okay, notice I got a little bit off the line there. I got a little bit off the line there, so that. Now that is the straight line drill. You do that straight line drill until they're perfectly, they got everything down that you need them to uh, be at. Make sure they can go forward, stop smoothly, and go from there. All right, the figure eight is done like this. You start at either cone or however you want to do it. And it's just like you see here, is we're going to do a figure eight. But there's certain points in which you're going to do certain stuff. Now, parents, you need to talk them through to this part, and I will show you that in the car when we're inside the car. But let me show you from the board here. The first thing they're going to do is they're actually going to give it, put it in drive and give it some gas where they go towards this. Now, once they get real close to the, the pole or cone or whatever you're using, you can imagine a, a dotted line here. They need to actually have their foot on what? The gas or the brake. You guessed it. That's right. They need to have their foot on the brake because they actually have to start slowing down. Now, at this point, they're going to have their foot on the brake, slowing down. They're going to do brake here. And actually, they're going to actually have their foot covering the gas here. Okay, cover the gas here. So as the car here, they got brake, brake, brake. Now they're going to take their foot off the brake. They're going to coast here. They're going to coast at a certain speed. As they come around, okay, and when they line pretty much, and I'll show you this in the car, this is real hard. When they line the target up with this next pole, they're actually going to gas, letting the wheels slide through their hands 
and come back. One other thing that we did not talk about is how far these should be apart. They should be far, far enough apart anywhere from 100 to uh, maybe 50 yards, 100 feet to 50 yards, somewhere around there, a good distance so they can actually get some gasting distance in here. Now what I do with my teenagers in my driving school is what, what I do is I talk them through it. And, and the kids got to hear this so they, they know what their foot is. So what I tell them is they come in here, break, 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 coast, 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 gas, let the wheel slide, keep on going, break, 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 coast, 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 gas, and let the wheel slide. Now if you talk them through that, they'll get through this little part a little bit better. And that's pretty much how I do the figure eight drill. Now do this until they and you feel very comfortable on that. Remember, positive reinforcement, parents, positive reinforcement to the teens, okay? All right? Now, that is the, that is the first one. The first one we did is a straight line drill. Now we did a figure eight. The next one we're gonna do is called a box. Now the box is very simple. You can do this in a wide open parking lot. You can do it where they have uh, little medians here where people can park and so forth, however you want to do it, it's totally up to you. But the whole goal of the box is to work a stopping turn and to work a rolling turn. Parents, what you're going to do here is you're going to start them on a box and you're going to go this way. I always like to go right turns first because usually the right turns are always the hardest to, to do. Now in each corner, you're going to have stops here. Okay? In these opposite corners, you're going to have rolls here. And they're going to treat these corners just like it was the figure eight. They're actually going to roll that turn. It's just like the same example as when you turn in your neighborhood and you've got streets in your neighborhood where you have a stop sign and you've got streets where, that you're going to turn onto that you don't have a stop sign. When they come up to this, is they're going to come down this little road right here. As they come down here, they're going to put on the blinker, okay? When they put on the blinker, remember, when they put on the blinker, that is when they actually say the words mirror. And they're going to look in the mirror to see, check the traffic behind them. Obviously, there will be no traffic for them in the parking lot, but this is just a habit of getting them used to the commentary. Now, as they start to make the turn, they're going to look both ways, they're going to check both ways, and as they make their turn, they're going to say clear. Now, after they say clear, I do not want them to say anything while they're making their turn, while they're doing their hand over hand or the shuffle, however they wanted to do. So at that time, they're going to make their turn and go. Then the next time they come down here, they're going to come down to where they're actually going to make a stop. So they're going to put the blinker on early. They're going to make a stop. Remember, when they put the blinker on, they're going to say what? Good, that's good, right. They're going to say mirror. They're going to make a stop. They're going to look both ways. They're going to say clear, and then they're actually going to go. Okay? They'll make a turn there. This gets them used to a stop turn, and this gets them used to a, a rolling turn. Now, sometimes I find, find parking lots where they got, a, uh, they got a parking lot where they actually can go out on the street here just a little bit and then go back in. That's okay. You can do that. All right? Just make sure the street is not a very busy street. So these are the three things that we're going to do in the parking lot. Now, I'll show you these in more in detail when we go out in the car. But this is pretty much the chalk talk that you want to sit down with your team and say, this is what we're going to try to accomplish. His eyes are already back at the other pole. Gas and head straight for the pole. Break, 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 break. No, don't stop. Hand over hand, look back for the other pole. Once he starts his hand over hand, that is when he does the pole. So he gasses and break, 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 break. Hand over hand, hand over hand, hand over hand. Looking back for that other pole, looking back for that other pole, and we'll go from there. You come up, you get a blinker on, mirror. He stops, looks both ways, clear. And then he makes his turn. Now the next turn, we're actually going to roll it. We're not going to stop. So he's going to go, Mirror. He doesn't have to say clear here because he's not stopping. And he's just going to roll it in. Our three goals that we're going to try to accomplish is we're going to try to accomplish good hand over hands, 
getting the steering wheel to slide through our hands, and smooth stop turns and smooth rolling turns. This will help us. Now, I do not want you to leave the parking lot at least a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes in the parking lot before they go out, even on your very good drivers. At least do this, because the main thing that we want them to get used to is the commentary driving. Remember, parents, the commentary driving is to help you understand what the teen is thinking about. Let me just tell you a couple things that you may run into. Problems. Problems. The first problem you may run into is very fast turns. If the teen is having very fast, fast turns, they need to hit the brake and slow it down a lot quicker. You may have them, when they do the straight line drill, you may have them weaving in and out. Turns too wide. When they go around that pole or that cone, they may turn so wide that they're not, they're not getting their heads back looking at the pole. And I'll show you that in the car. And then obviously if you, uh, you're watching the foot, and the two feet, one, run, one doing the brake and one doing the gas, you want to watch that and make sure they don't do that. Remember, to get out of the parking lot, they must do good hand over hands, smooth turns, the way you would see them in everyday car situations, as well as good rolling turns. Once they get that down, then you can go to the next lesson, which is the neighborhood. We're going to go over the goals of the neighborhood, as well as we're going to go over the fundamentals of commentary driving. Again, this is where we really want to emphasize our commentary driving. We're going to accomplish all the neighborhood and all our other lessons on this very basic neighborhood lesson. If there's any lesson, parents, that you want to be real tough in, and make sure they have the basic fundamentals is right here. Do not let them out of this neighborhood until you know they're doing very good commentary as well as they're reading the intersections and reading traffic. Okay? So, let's start. The neighborhood is very simple, and, and every turn that you do in the neighborhood is going to be done in the same process. Okay? So let's talk about how do we commentary in the neighborhood. Okay? If this is their car, is they're coming up and they're going to make a right turn here. What you simply see very simple is this. They're going to about so far from here, they're going to put on the blinker. When they put on the blinker, they're actually going to say the word mirror. They're going to look in the mirror and check the mirror out. Remember, that is to see what traffic is behind them. See if there's cars real close to them or real far back behind them. As they start getting closer, their foot is going to be on the brake. Are they going to mash the brake? No. But they do need to slow down enough to where they can make the turn. Usually all turns are done at 8 to 10 miles per hour. Now, if there's no stop sign here, at this time they will scan left, scan right, and they will just say clear out loud, telling you that they saw the traffic and it is clear. At that time, they will make their turn. When they finally make their turn, during this part of the turn, they will not say a single word. Okay? Once they do make this turn, and they do, then they're going to do a space read. Now, if you get the little section in there uh, classified as neighborhood chalk talk, it talks about all the things that we're going to do in there, okay, and how they're going to commentary when they're supposed to say clear and when they're supposed to say mirror, okay? Now, let's assume that they actually are going to go through this intersection straight. And let's assume that there's a car sitting waiting here. At that time, they would call that a clipper right, a clipper right, because it's on the right side. They are telling you, parents, that, they're, that they see the car right and they know that you know that they see it, okay? That is what the commentary is for. Now, a lot of times, this car may take off and go. Well, now you know the student sees that, and the student should have his foot on the brake, not mashing the brake, but his foot on the brake to show you that he did see the, uh, this car. Now, again, in the neighborhood, you do need to review who has a right-of-way at a one-way stop a two-way stop, a three-way stop, and who has a right-of-way at a four-way stop. 
That is all with the chalk talk on the neighborhood, okay? As well as you need to watch for stop signs, okay? Now, if the student has a stop sign and he's still going to make a right turn, he's going to put his blinker on, say mirror. When he gets to about right here, he's actually going to stop. He's going to look both ways at that time. So he says clear. He makes his turn. And he also is going to say what? Clip a right if there's a car here. Okay? And then he's going to finish his turnout. Okay? Now, one other thing that I add to this whole neighborhood commentary, and this is up to the parent if they want to do this, I add that they call the intersection out. If they don't know the difference between a one-way stop, a two-way stop, and a three-way stop, and they don't see this, then have the student go ahead and call two-way stop, four-way stop, or three-way stop. Have them call that right before they say clear. And that way, you know that they understand the intersection. Once, they, you, once that you see, as the parent, see that they understand that it is a one-way stop, two-way stop, or three-way stop, then at that time, you can tell them to just go ahead and work on clearing instead of calling the intersection. But I would do this at first, maybe the first couple of intersections that you've got. Okay? Again, let's go out to the neighborhood, and let's show you this out in the car. As we do the neighborhood here, you want to do, make sure to get out of the neighborhood that they do five good rights, five good lefts. Okay? Make sure you mismatch those. Some rolling turns, some straight turns. Now, all I'm going to do is pretty much you're going to repeat exactly what you did in the parking lot. We're going to review that, warm them up there for about 10 minutes, do a figure eight, do a box, and then all of a sudden start straight out in the neighborhood. Now, the only thing that I want to add in the neighborhood is the actual part where they go into a cul-de-sac. Sometimes some people call them cul-de-sac, some people call them circle, circle drives. And usually, you can actually work a figure eight out of that. So if you've got a neighborhood that actually has that, then work, work in those doing it like a figure eight drill, as we did. Now, my only goal here for the neighborhood is to get the commentary down. Because remember, when we leave the neighborhood from here, we're getting into traffic. And you've got to know what your teen is thinking. So here, I'm just going to work on commentary. I'm going to work on lane changes. We're also going to work on the U-turn as well. And we'll talk about going to the top of the median. So here we go. Let's start our commentary driving for Parent Talks Driver's Ed. So we put it in the drive. We come up to our first stop sign. Now, what I'd actually do right here is I'd actually go ahead and have them identify the first five to six intersections so to see if they understand what intersection it is. So we'll do that this very first part. Mirror. Remember, when they put on the blinker, they're going to say mirror. Look in both ways. Clear. Four-way stop. Now we have a rolling turn up here is they're going to come into this. And pretty much, they're working the rolling turn. Mirror. He looks in the mirrors. Now, one thing I do want to say, notice I'm looking down into the mirror. That mirror is not adjusted right. So you need to make sure that mirror actually gets adjusted the way you want it to be. Now, as you're working your little neighborhood, as you're going through, have them come in, do some rolling turns. Mirror. Notice that I'm scanning the intersection. I go ahead and turn in here. Here's a, one of our, our cul-de-sacs or circles that you want to talk about. And you actually want to go ahead and have them go around that, that, that cul-de-sac. If they're having troubles with their turns, this will fix it out. And you actually want them to have them go around it a couple of times. Just don't go around it one time. Go around a couple of times. As they're going around the cul-de-sac, watch, watch my hands. Notice a lot of teenagers will move their hands back and forth here. And what they're trying to do is control the car, OK? You don't want them to do that in a cul-de-sac or a circle. You actually want them to grab the steering wheel and hold it and just go around the circle without doing anything. Notice that, that, I, that I don't even, I'm not even moving the steering wheel. I'm actually just turning the wheel as we're going around the circle. 
then all of a sudden you want them to go back the other way. A lot of teenagers want to kind of, I call it the grandma drive. They actually want to move the steering wheel back and forth, back and forth, thinking that they're controlling the car, and they don't do that. In the neighborhood, you actually want to teach the teens that you are guiding the car, not driving the car. We're actually guiding the car. We're guiding the car where we want it to go. Where do we want it to go? We want it to go to our target. Okay. Here's our first stop sign as we come up. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do the commentary so you understand how to do that. They have to be perfect on this before you let them out of the neighborhood. Mirror. One-way stop. Clear. Mirror. Clear. Now, they didn't actually have to say clear at that time, but I made them say clear for the simple fact is it's getting them used to saying that. I'm really making sure. Don't let them out of the neighborhood unless they say clear. It's to help you know what their brain is thinking. Mirror. Three-way stop. Clear. Again, that's, that's it for the neighborhood. Five perfect turns right, five perfect turns left, Every single time he runs a stop sign or rolls a stop sign or he doesn't do the turnover, then at that time he has to start all over. We've talked about this plenty of times before. We showed you in the neighborhood that when you got the median here, you're actually going to have some streets like this. Now, some people say, some people say that if you don't have a street to here, you go to the bottom of the median. I disagree with that for this simple fact is this. If you have a car here and you have a car, you have another car that came in here like this. So both cars come in here just like this. Who can see the actual yellow car? Obviously this green car can see this car better. That is why I always tell people when you go to make a U-turn or you go to make a left turn into the street, you always come in here and go like this. Now a lot of people ask, where does the next car ready to go in there wait? It waits right there. This car coming out of the parking lot might come here like that, and you'll just let that car go. Or this car will come here and come in here like this. What that does, it helps you see the traffic. This car can see that traffic good. This car can see this traffic good. Okay? Imagine this, there's an imaginary line in the middle of that. In some places, they actually put a curve right there, okay? But most places, they don't. This is actually how you want to handle the U-turns. Never go, even though if he leaves a spot here, go there. Now, let's assume that you're the car coming up, and this car comes out of the parking lot, and he comes up and takes your spot up there. That's okay. You come up here, sit right here, let him go, and then you come in to the top of the median. Okay? Remember, driving is patience. You've got to clear this out. I know because I've taught defensive driving, and I've seen lots of people go to this spot, and they've gotten a wreck, and they've gotten tickets for that spot. And we don't want you to have that. So be aware of these type of situations. Always go to the top of the median. If you come out of the parking lot, you're always going to go the closest. Now, I tell people, don't leave more than a bicycle length room between you and the curb. You don't want to leave this much room, and another car comes in here, steals your spot, and steals your sight away. The first rule in the intersections is the first person that gets there first goes first. The DPS and the Texas Motor Vehicle Book, they've actually put in there, right away is given not taken. Okay? So now, let's assume that we have two cars that come to the intersection. Okay? We have a car here and a car here. It's a two-way stop or four-way stop, however you want to choose. The, if they both tie, then it's the car on the right goes first. If this person gets there first before this person, 
then this car would go first. Again, remember, right away is given, not taken. Now, if they both tie, which car would go first? You're right. The actual, the yellow car would go first because it is on the right of the red car. Okay? Now, let's go to a three-way stop. For instance, you can have a three-way stop here. Assuming that this arrow is not here, we're going to have a three-way stop. We're going to say that this section is blocked off. Now, on a three-way stop, obviously, the car that is, the two cars that are going straight will go first. The car that is only turning will go second. Now, here is a trick question for you. This car and this car tie. It's a four-way stop or a two-way stop. They both tie. What you want to do here is very simply, if both cars are going straight, they would both go at the same time. But if the red car is deciding to make a turn, it must yield the right of way to the car going straight. So now we have our third rule. So again, let me talk about the rules again. The first rule is the car that gets there first goes first. Then it, if it's a tie, it's the car on the right. Then if it's a tie and both cars are going straight, they would both go straight. But if one car is deciding to turn, the car going straight goes first. Okay? So now, since we have that, now let's talk about the very hard one here is the four-way stop. Assuming it is a four-way stop, four streets, the cars are all going straight. Obviously, if one car is turning, he's going to have to yield the right away. But if all cars are going straight, who goes first here? What I usually do in this situation, and what I teach my uh, teenagers to do in my driving school, is I literally tell them the first person that takes the initiative to go first goes first. For instance, if this car actually eases out, eases out, eases out, and these cars let him go, then he would be the first car. Now, here's the problem. Who is really the next car to go first? You guessed it, it is the car to the right of him. Now, a lot of people say if this car goes, this car should just go ahead and take off too. That is okay, but understand, this red car needs to know if this yellow car decides to take off first, that he needs to know if this one clears that the actual real car to go first is that car on the right. So that is the right of way. Now what you want to actually do is have your shoulders line up with the line before the hull. Then that's when you actually start to turn the wheels all the way and take it in to the parking spot. That's how you park to the right. That's also the same way you're going to park to the left. When you back out, you actually want to put it in reverse. And what I tell people to do is back straight out. Don't start turning the wheels, because if you start turning the wheels, watch what happens as I turn the wheels. Notice my front end is coming to hit this car. We don't want that to happen. So what I tell people to do is when you actually back out, you want to back out straight. Notice my wheels are totally straight. I'm going to back out until my body can see. Now, a lot of times, people cannot see around these cars. So I tell you to talk with your brake lights. You back out a little bit, stop. Back out a little bit, stop. Now I can actually see both ways. And once I can see both ways, then when my, front, my mirrors or front bumper passes the other bumpers, then I'm going to turn the wheels all the way. And then I back it out. I put it in drive, turn the wheels all the way before you go and then you just take off and go. That is how you back out of the parking spot. Now this lesson is going to take you to show you how to do the parallel parking. Now we already showed you a little bit about regular parking, uh, which you, we showed you on the guidelines. Parallel parking is a little more difficult in the sense of the angles that you got to get at. Now at some DPSs, if you decide to take the test, that you will have to practice parallel parking and be perfect at it. As you're coming up to the car you want, you've got to have your blinker on. 
That's the most important part. And most people line the car up either with the bumper to bumper on the back end. I sometimes leave it a little bit staggered and, and leave it behind. I got the blinker on. I look behind me. Every time you back up, you're always looking behind you. And the first thing I do is I turn the wheels all the way. I got the wheels turned all the way where you can't turn them anymore. I come back. I get it at a 45 degree angle from the curve, all right, and then I turn the wheels all the way the other way, and I take it in. And then I straighten the wheels up and drive forward. And that is how you parallel park. Okay, parents, now what we're going to do is the freeway lesson as well as we're going to do track two. Once you start getting them into uh, multi-lanes, like three lanes, as well as the freeway, you can go in and out of the freeway, as well as do the multi-lanes. Now, I think multi-lane um, driving is a lot harder than doing the freeway. The freeway, I think, is probably the easiest uh, of, the, of the two lessons, So, because you don't have to really worry about traffic. Now, what we're going to actually do is I'm just going to kind of show you how I get on the freeway and off the freeway. But remember, again, we need great space, three to four second following distance. We need to make sure the students check in our rear view mirror a lot more here because we're going to watch out for the rear enders. As well as making sure they're still commentary and calling out everything. So pretty much from here, all I'm going to do is just do a simple lane change for you. I'm going to show you some, uh, some of the traffic on the freeway as well as mainly just kind of uh, me doing lane changes and showing you how I'm moving from one lane to the other and how I actually gas up and get on. Okay? So let's head on out to the freeway, and you can do this with the freeway or track two, either one. Again, to get here, they need to be making great lane changes. Their turns need to be perfect. The commentary needs to be perfect. So let's go, and let's hit the freeway. All right. Now, as we're getting ready to go on the freeway, we're going to actually start looking in our side mirror. And what we're doing is we're checking the traffic out. Do not get your head, don't get your kids to start doing a whole bunch of head checks just like this. What happens is they forget about the front. You want to make sure the mirrors are good and just kind of look on that. Now, as we're coming up, I'm getting ready to get on a on ramp. And what you've got to be aware of here is, is I actually got to change lanes to get over there. So I'm looking in the mirror. I see the car. I look over the shoulder, back, and then I go ahead and slide into that lane. Now, most importantly, we do not want to cut people off. You definitely don't want to cut people off. Now, here we go. We're starting to see our on-ramp. We put our blinker on. Right when they put that blinker on, have them start checking that mirror. See what that traffic's like. See if it's a thick traffic. Tell them to start looking for their spot. And what they want to do is smog, signal, mirror, over the shoulder, go. So he's checking his mirrors. And right before he goes over the shoulder, he's going to say clear. And then he's going to go over the shoulder. And then he moves it on. Now, the reason he's saying clear there is to make sure that you, as the parent, understand that he is going now. We must get our, our traffic, our flow of speed up with the other traffic, and then also regain good front space. Now, when we're getting off the freeway, uh, parents, what you want to do is have them watch the cars coming on. There's some cars coming on. I'm putting a blinker on to tell that guy that I'm fixed to go off. Now, this is what we call a weave lane. And as we're getting off, we're checking over. I looked over the shoulder to make sure they don't get on where we actually merge. At that time, you'd actually want to probably take your foot off the gas and merge. And then as all of a sudden we're getting off the ramp, we're going to check the flow of traffic, one little head check, use your mirror, maybe even use that outside mirror. As they go, they got the blinker on, they take a peek over the shoulder. They look, and then they go ahead and merge on. And pretty much that is it for the freeway lesson, getting on. Get them at least five or six ons 
and five or six offs. Okay? We'll see you back in the classroom. Remember, IPDE, we're going to identify and we're going to predict always the worst. Okay? So if we're predicting the worst, we're going to predict that this car is going to speed up. What do we do when we get on the freeway? We speed up to get on the freeway. We don't slow down. So when this car slows, starts speeding up and he starts running out of room, you just want to take your foot off the gas, coast, don't hit the brake, and let this car go ahead and slide in. Or the best way is to go ahead and change lanes and let that car come on. That is actually the best two ways. Now, the other thing I want to talk about the freeway is why you're on the freeway. Now, a lot of people, I've showed you in the neighborhood, I've showed you uh, in the parking lot how we set the different mirrors, the two types of mirrors that you can use. This is the reason why we look over the shoulder. And for this reason, why? Who has the right of way here? It's the car moving to the right. It's this car moving to the right. Now, the problem is, you're not going to see, the, if you're in this car, you're not going to see that yellow car in your, rear view, in your side mirrors or whatever. You're actually going to have to turn the shoulders and see it. If it was right here, you could probably see it in your rearview mirror. Okay? So that is the reason why we take that quick glance over the shoulder to make sure you have that. Okay? So remember who has the right of way there. Another way most people say is this is the faster lane, and that's the reason for that. Some state laws, especially the state of Texas, I know Georgia has this as well, is if the speed limit is 70 miles an hour, this car is going 70, this car is going 75, does this car have to get over? Yes, it does. It actually has to get over. In some states, it's a $250 ticket if this car does not move over. Notice there's no traffic. You only drive in this lane when you want to pass a car. You pass the car, you get back over.